So I am on my front porch area and I'm about to start Rebecca Yaros's fourth wing. And I've been so excited to start this because you guys know the hype has been insane and I've just been dying to like see what the hype is about. So I'm gonna be starting that now and I'm gonna let you guys know kind of my thoughts throughout the process. It's just gonna be a reading vlog while I read the fourth wing. So let's cross our fingers because I have really high expectations going into this, like really, really high. Um, but apparently this is like new adult, but it's also romance as well. about 60 pages into the fourth wing and I was trying to decide do I want to do this as a spoiler filled vlog or do I want to do a non-spoiler filled vlog and I think I decided to do spoiler filled because it's just funner that way so if you haven't read it just know that I'm going to be spoiling in this video and don't watch this video until you've read the book but I'm liking it so far one thing that I can say is that this is definitely a info dumpy beginning um it definitely drops you right into the world it drops you kind of into a little bit of an action scene and through the process she's kind of learning about the school and about like the writing program because she wants to be a dragon writer and or she doesn't want to be her mom is forcing her to be and so she's kind of learning about the quadrant that she is in and there's a lot of info that's being dumped and you're meeting a lot of characters and one thing that I have a hard time with in books is when there's a lot of characters that are being introduced at once I have a hard time keeping track of them and I really like to have a clear picture of the characters in my head and when there's too many I get confused really really easy and it becomes really overwhelming for me but I'm just taking it really really slow and I think that's kind of how you have to take the beginning of this book is slow so you can like get all the information. Like I've used so many orange tabs, which orange tabs is important information to remember. So when I go read the second book, I can just read my orange tabs. So yeah, lots of information. I'm taking it very, very slow. Um, one thing that I do think is interesting is the Dane situation. Um, so I know that Xavier, that's his name, right? Xavier? No, it's not Xavier, Zayden. Zayden, which I hate that name by the way, but Zayden, I believe is going to be the love interest, which is interesting. It's definitely going to be like an enemies to lovers and Zayden, I like as a character so far, he's kind of like the bad boy guy, but I have a good picture of him in my head, but obviously I'm a friends to lovers girl, like through and through. So I'm like rooting for Dane, even though I know Dane isn't going to be like the main love interest, I don't think. Um, but I have like this feeling that something is going to happen to Dane. And I'm not exactly sure what, but I feel like Dane isn't going to last. They're really building up Dane's character as like a really likable character. So that might mean something bad for him in the future. But I don't have really a lot of information to go for that theory. Well, I was going to read, but now I don't think I'm going to be able to. Why does he do this every time? Okay, so I'm kind of confused. I don't know if they mentioned it or not but does violet have like a bone disorder or something is that what makes her so weak or her bones so brittle like does she have some sort of like disorder like that's kind of like the vibe i'm getting because they keep bringing it up and like talking about how she breaks like a porcelain teacup or whatever and i'm like is it just that they're just trying to say she's weak or is she actually like does she have issues with her bones i don't know and i don't get it because i feel like it's a little overkill if she doesn't have an issue with her bones, you know what I mean? So I don't know if I'm like missing something or not, but I feel like maybe she has some sort of like bone density issue. But then if like she does have some sort of like bone density disorder or whatever, like why would you force her into the dragon riding quadrant? You know what I mean? Like if you know with almost 95% certainty that your daughter's going to die or even 99%, right? With like the percentages that people die in the quadrant, why wouldn't you just put her in the scribe quadrant like she wants and at least like let her live and enjoy her life? Like it's interesting to me that her mom is like so obsessed with her being a dragon rider. Like why? Especially when she's so like breakable or whatever. I don't know. It's just interesting to me. I mean, I understand that the mom is probably just like really stubborn and like wants all of her kids to be dragon riders, but it's just odd to me. Like, your daughter's probably going to die. I mean, obviously, she's not going to die because this is a book. And it would be weird if she just, like, died. But, I mean, if this book were real, she would probably die. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> I 
wish authors wouldn't give characters names when they don't need names. Like, this author is giving every single character a name, and it's making me think, oh, I have to remember this character, oh, I have to remember this character, oh, I have to remember this character, and it's like so many flipping characters, and I'm like, don't give them a name, they're not important, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of freaking characters in this book. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if you guys know this, but when I start a fantasy series, usually what I do is I go on Pinterest and I like find characters or people that remind me of like the characters in my head that I'm seeing so I can like pin them on the board. That way when I read like the future books, I can go back to my Pinterest board and like see how I pictured everybody and stuff like that and just like the setting and the vibe. And I'm going to show you guys who I picked for each character because I don't think that my characters are gonna look the same as your characters or like my vibes are gonna be the same as your vibes. And just remember that everybody pictures things differently. So just because I picture characters this way doesn't mean that they are or that's how they were described. It's just how I have them in my head. All right, so this right here is Violet's mom. I picture her like this, but like with her hair shorter. So imagine if her hair was like cut like that. That's how I picture Violet's mom. This is Xander. So I don't think Xander is supposed to have longish hair like this, but I had to differentiate him between Dane in some sort of way. So I decided to give him longer hair, but he has really dark hair. And I like this one because he looks kind of evil in a way with like those bright blue eyes. Like this is very much how I'm picturing Xander right here. So this is Violet. Kind of for lack of a better picture, I couldn't really find anything that I really loved for her, but that's kind of how I picture her. This is Mira. So Mira has short brown hair. This is Imogen. Now, I don't know if Imogen's going to be kind of a main character, but I kind of have a feeling she will be. But this is kind of how I picture Imogen. And then this here is Rhiannon. And I actually picture Rhiannon with more of like, I do picture her with the locks, but more like as like a lower bun. Like she wears the bun a little bit lower on her head, but this is kind of how I picture her to look in a way. I did, this is kind of how I pictured the first scene where they have to like cross that bridge. I have pictures of the library. This would be like the scribe quadrant there. This is how I kind of picture the veil, I think it's what it's called, where all the dragons kind of reside. And this is, what's his name? Dane. So I picture Dane with like a beard like this and like shorter hair. I definitely picture him with a beard because I think it mentioned a beard earlier in the book. So those are my character choices. What do you guys think? Are they kind of spot on or do you guys picture the characters completely different? Okay, so I'm sitting in my little rocking chair. It's one of those like little egg chairs and I love reading right here. It's super comfy and relaxing and it's really nice outside but I want to talk about the book so far so I think I'm at like 150 pages in or so and Oralee I think that's her name Oralee just died by falling off the obstacle course and I am living for the fact that this author creates characters just to kill them off like I am so tired of reading books where nobody dies like one thing that I've always been irritated by with like Sarah J Mass novels is that none of her characters ever die and like she'll kill them off but then they always come back to life in some sort of way so there's like you'll always know that the characters are going to come back so it's never like that impactful. So yeah I feel like I love that this author is doing that in this book and it makes it so you're not really sure who's going to live and who's going to die and I know like that's the main point of this book is that like people die here and so she really wanted to like show that, but I'm really glad that she's actually showing it, so. Okay, you guys, so I just read the threshing scene last night amazing like I was so invested in her finding her dragon and like everything worked out so good for her and I'm just like every little every sentence I'm like oh purple tab purple tab purple tab purple tab purple tab <laughs> like my purple tabs are like moments I love or like moments I like or whatever and I literally used up like all my purple tabs just in the threshing scene alone it was just so good Literally, Dane is really starting to piss me off. Like, I kind of liked him at the beginning of the book. I was like, oh, he's cute, and he, like, really loves her and wants to protect her and stuff. 
but he's so obsessed with like keeping her safe that it's driving me insane like what the heck so i'm kind of confused because i can't figure out like what time period this takes place in like is it kind of like harry potter or is it like more current like i can't tell if everything is like more medieval which i don't think it is but then sometimes there's mention of things like being made out of wood and stuff like that and i'm like well if it was more like in the current times it would be made out of other things other than wood then then like the way they describe other things it doesn't feel like it's too far in the past so i'm like how am i supposed to be picturing this setting like is it so i'm kind of just like picturing it like harry potter sort of i don't know what do you guys think i think it's probably kind of like that um, but then at other times I feel like it's almost like an old school, but like in newer times. Okay, you guys, so I'm a little over 300 pages in to Fourth Wing and I'm really liking the book, but I'm hitting like this lull in the plot. And I think that I'm probably not the only one that feels like there's a lull in this plot. And it's like right after threshing and it's kind of like this area where it's just a whole bunch of training and then her waiting for her magic to like kind of come out or her signet is that what it's called signet she's like training some more and then she's lifting weights and then she's talking to dane and then she's lifting more weights and then she's training and then she's and i just feel like there's nothing happening and this like lull period after the threshing where they get their dragons and stuff is kind of boring so i'm about to read a little bit more hoping that kind of things start to pick up a little bit like the whole romance between her and zayden is interesting and everything but um, I feel like that's really the only thing kind of pushing the story forward at the moment. Finally, she yells at Dane for being way too overprotective of her, and I'm here for it. And honestly, I'm sort of feeling like Dane is a little bit, like, one-dimensional as a character. Like, I'm starting to get annoyed with him only worrying about protecting her and the fact that she's going to die and all this other stuff. Like, I sort of wish that the author did a little bit more with Dane, because I feel like he's sort of just really annoying but in like one way like I wish he was a bit more dimensional if that makes sense with it. I'm fine with whatever keeps Violet safe, if you haven't noticed. I swear, if Dane talks about keeping Violet safe one more time, I'm going to scream. Like at this point, I'm pretty sure it's Dane's only personality trait. All right, you guys, so I wanted to talk about something that's kind of irritating me in this novel, and I wouldn't say that it's completely, like, horrible or anything like that, but it's something that kind of has irked me throughout this book because I feel like it's sort of illogical. And she wanted to put it in here to kind of make this book brutal and violent and everything. But in reality, it doesn't make a ton of sense. And I don't really get it up at this point of the story. Like I got it at the beginning when, you know, they were trying to kill off all of, you know, the really weak people in the quadrant. And so like the weak ones were dying or whatever. But now that they all have their dragons, like I don't understand what the point of killing them all off is. So we're at 433 pages in and it says... We were warned the quadrant always loses 10% of the graduating class in the final test, but it's more than that. I just can't put my finger on it. So they're at the very last, the last and final test, right? They've already gone through threshing and they all have their dragons and the dragons chose these particular cadets because they thought they were the strongest. Those are the people that they wanted to be their riders, right? And they chose them because they wanted to channel their magic through them. So clearly the dragons know what they're doing. They chose those people. So why would this school still want so badly to kill off these cadets? It just doesn't make sense to me. Like you want as many cadets as you possibly can. You want as many dragon riders as you can because it's gonna be better for your army anyways to have more people. Because it even talked earlier on how like they didn't have enough people for something. I don't remember. And I'm like, well, yeah, if you want, if you would stop killing off all of your cadets for no reason like why are you killing your cadets that have dragons and magic powers 
for like shits and giggles. It doesn't make any sense to me. You know what I mean? Like keep as many as you possibly can. Like just because they're sort of weaker than like the top dog or whatever, doesn't mean like they're that weak. They're, they still made it pretty much to the end. So they're strong cadets. Don't kill them off anymore. You know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. All right guys, so it's funny because my green tabs are parts of the book that I didn't like or poor writing or just things that I didn't, that just were irritating me. And some of my green tabs are parts where Dane puts his hands on her face. Cause I'm like, why does he always do that? It's so annoying. Like he does it at the weirdest time to like grab her face. And it was just irritating me. I'm like, okay. I just thought it was like weird writing or something, but apparently, it's because he reads minds and the only way he can read minds is by touching the person's face. So now that makes sense. And I just have to wait things out for things to make sense. So that was one of them. Hey guys, so I just finished The Fourth Wing last night and I was really excited to just jump on here and talk about it with you guys and kind of do my final review of everything and like what I thought of it. Now, if you follow me on Goodreads and you already saw that I gave this book uh, four stars, but I feel like it's kind of like a lower four, maybe closer to like a three than like a five, if that makes sense. So I want to talk about my thoughts with this book. Now here's the thing, and the reason why I gave it four stars is because I think the concept and the overall like idea and stuff of this story is really what grabbed me most of all, because I think the overall story is just really cool and interesting and fun and just a really fun idea that just we needed. Like we needed a story like this I feel like. And one movie that I absolutely love is How to Train Your Dragon. And I remember after watching How to Train Your Dragon like I was so obsessed with the idea of having my own dragon and being able to ride my own dragon and it would just be like my pet dragon, right? Like just the bond between a dragon is such a fun idea. And I'm an animal lover too, like I love my pets so much like I feel like when you're an animal lover a book like this can just really hit home for you because you know what that bond between an animal and a human can like look like and so I think that that's something too that is really great about this book and why so many people like it because the bond between pet and human is so strong sometimes. So that's what I really loved about this. I loved the threshing, I loved seeing, you know, Taryn's personality and kind of how they communicated with each other and it was just really really fun. I loved Andarna so much. Is that her name? Andarna? I think so. Um, she was so flippin' cute. Like I loved her so much and I just kind of loved, she was just kind of like this little side dragon that was just adorable. And there was just so much about that whole thing that I really really loved. I also really loved the romance in this as well. I think that the romance is gonna be something people either love or they don't love. I personally really liked it. I think it was a pretty good balance between like slow burn and insta-love sort of. I mean I wouldn't say it was insta-love but it was like kind of in a way, but I really liked the balance there. I don't like it when um, romance is too, too, too slow burn. Like when it just takes so flippin' long to like get there, it starts to get on my nerves after a while and I feel like this really did it pretty well. I really loved Zayden as well as a character. Um, the way I pictured him was really great and as you guys saw I have a Pinterest board. I'll link it down below so you guys can look at how I pictured like all the characters and things like that but I just really liked how I pictured Zayden. I think it worked really well for his character and I think the way that you picture a character can really determine whether or not you're gonna like the character sometimes and I think the way I pictured Zayden just worked perfectly. It definitely is a romance heavy book and you know I'm a romance lover so I definitely didn't mind the fact that this was romance heavy but I could see how some people would be like okay enough of the romance you know what I mean but I think that Rebecca Yaros did write this kind of for the romance like that was purposefully the main point of the plot or a main point of the plot and I also really liked Violet as a main character I loved her um disability and her chronic pain and things like that I think it made for a very very unique character I really actually liked the fact that she wasn't overly bratty Sometimes I cannot stand when uh, like female main characters are portrayed as strong females strictly because they're just kind of bratty and mean and kind of rude all the time and just kind of <laughs> insufferable <laughs> because they're trying to write the character as being like a strong female character. But those character traits are not likable in anybody. They're not likable in males, they're not likable in females, like nobody likes a rude person that's just mean and demanding and arrogant all the time. And I see that happen a lot with female main characters in fantasies a lot of times, but I really like that Violet was a good balance. You know what I mean? I think that she did a really good job with her character, making her kind and understanding 
and all that kind of thing without making her too obnoxiously rude all the time. But the other thing I liked about her is that she had a really good arc. You know what I mean? You saw her slowly kind of become a stronger individual. She got more confident in herself and things like that and I think she did a really good job with that. And I also loved the ending. I thought the ending was really really great. It was very captivating and that twist at the end where her brother came back, like I was like, whoa, did not see that coming at all, but it was like such a good way to finish it because I'm like, okay, okay, now we need to get Mira. But I really loved the end. I thought the end was really, really great. I think it was a little bit maybe predictable, sort of, but to be honest, for some reason when I was reading this book, I wasn't trying to predict anything, like I wasn't in prediction mode, so if I would have thought about things more, I think I would have probably been able to predict a lot of the stuff in this book, but... I didn't. I was just kind of enjoying the ride. But overall I think it was a pretty enjoy enjoyable book and those are definitely like my pros to this book. But there were definitely some cons as well. So one thing if you guys remember earlier in this video I talked about how I didn't know if like this took place more in the present times or like in the past. Like I didn't know if maybe it was more current but they were in a school that was more like an older medieval school. I had been there for many 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 years and I think the reason why I was having such a hard time picturing like when this book was taking place was a the language that she used she used a lot of like dialogue that sounded very much how we talk today I feel like this read extremely YA in that way um and also a lot of the characters had like pink hair and orange hair and blue hair and all this other stuff and don't get me wrong I understand this is a fantasy world and people can have like crazy colored hairs in fantasy worlds but I think those two things together kind of pulled me out of the story a little bit because I couldn't tell for a really long time if this book was like back in history or if it was more current. Like, I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out for a while. And once I figured out like, oh, this is definitely more of a like historical thing, then things started to not make sense. Like I was like, well, then why are they talking like this? Like, why is their hair all crazy funky colors and stuff? Like, it was just kind of hard to like picture. Like I kept picturing people with like piercings and tattoos and like purple hair you know, like Gen Z kids in this adult fantasy novel. It was very strange. So that was something that definitely pulled me out of the novel. I wish she kind of just stuck more to like historical type of vibes and I think that that could have made this book so much better. And I think I would have been able to take this book a bit more seriously. I feel like it kind of made this book feel a little juvenile at times. Another thing that really bugged me about this book was the uh, one-dimensional characters. <laughs> okay, not all the characters were one-dimensional. I did like you know, Violet, I liked Zayden and stuff like that, but there were some characters that really, really, really bugged me because I felt like they were only there to push the plot forward and push the main character's, like, story. They weren't there for any other reason, but they were still, like, main characters, and it was really frustrating to me, especially Dane and Rhiannon. So Dane literally had no other personality traits other than the fact that he wanted to keep Violet safe, and he followed rules. Those were the only two personality traits that Dane had, yet he was like a main, main character. And like, I feel like Dane was the perfect char character to do some really creative stuff with. You know, a character that you could love, but also kind of hate. One of those characters that are really complicated and very unique. But for some reason, the way that she did Dane made him so flat and he could have been so good and it was just such a letdown because I just felt like Dane was so flippin' one-dimensional. And I feel like she could have done a lot more with Rhiannon as well. I mean, Rhiannon was a bit better than Dane, I feel like, but we just didn't get a lot of Rhiannon and she was like her best friend and I kind of felt like I wanted more with Rhiannon as well. Of course, this could change in the second book. I've read books where, you know, there's side characters that go way deeper in the second book, like Rune being one example. I mean, he was kind of a side character in the first book, but then they really went way deeper with him in the second book. So, you know, she could definitely do something different with the characters in the next book. I was just very disappointed with how she decided to do them in this book. Like, I just feel like Dane could have been done so much better. And a lot of the characters felt just a little bit one-dimensional, like her mom as well. Like, she was just so flat to me. Like, why does she treat you this way? Why is she such a bitch? Like, why? You know, it just felt like I wasn't quite satisfied with some of these characters and I could have been more satisfied. And then I would say probably my last con of this book would be the slow spots. Like, I, you guys know that I'm not very good with slower spots in fantasy novels. Like, I get really, really flippin' bored and I just need stuff to be going on a lot or I just need things to have, like, a point. And I feel like with this book, after Threshing, there was this huge chunk of the book where it was like, nothing was really happening. Like they were just like training and then they were like fighting each other and then they were 
waiting for her magic to form and then she was having conversation with Zayden and then she would have a conversation with Dane and then she would train some more and then she would fight some more and then she would wait for her magic some more and it was just like this really boring part of the story where I'm like okay let's get to the point like I understand that she's training and everything but like I feel like I'm bored and I feel like that happened a couple of times in this book where there was just some major lulls and I think it could have been edited down maybe a little bit or just less it's like describe the world better don't describe her working out more like pick and choose what you're going to like spend time on you know what I mean but that was like the only issue but that's me being extremely picky because I am really picky about slower spots in novels and this definitely had a few of those slower spots overall it was a really good experience like reading this I had a lot of fun with it do I think it's worth the hype that it's gotten no I don't I don't think that the writing is like you know top 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 notch you know like for the hype that this has gotten. I think that there's probably writers that deserve a bit more hype than maybe this one, but it was still really fun. Like I get why it was so hyped because of the concept. The concept was just so fun, so unique, and I totally, totally get that. But I would like to hear what you guys thought of this book. I, like I said, I gave it four stars, maybe a little bit of a lower four, but it was still like a fun, enjoyable read. Like I would definitely recommend people read this, especially if you like romance and fantasy and all of that kind of thing. I think it's definitely enjoyable and really fun. So yeah, that is it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Um, I know it was kind of long, but <laughs> I thought it would be really fun since this book is so flippin' hyped. I thought it'd be really fun to just like totally do a spoiler filled vlog and kind of like just talk about it with you guys. So that is it you guys. I will see you in my next video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.